I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye some roving. Specifically, this Humbug Merino Wool Undyed White and Gray Blend from Paradise Fibers. The technique that we're going to do today, I will get to in a moment, uh, but this fiber is really exciting to me already because it is this gorgeous blend of gray and white. Oof, look at this. This is so so pretty and already on its own would be lovely to spin there is amazing dimension in here to begin with i am a paradise fibers affiliate marketer and paradise fibers gave me this roving for free along with their acid dye collection to test out and review so while this video is not sponsored i did receive the materials for it for free and if you would like to learn more about the tools equipment and everything i'm using today i do have links down in the video description and a huge thank you to paradise fibers for giving me some gorgeous fiber to play with last month chemnitz patrons voted for me to insert some dry dye powder into roving and then submerge it and this is super exciting to me but i think to do this and to make it easier because this fiber is so fluffy and blended already i'm going to braid it because i think it'll be easier for me to insert some dry dye powder into here and have it stay if i have it a little bit more compact and this will also add some like resist to our project as well so we'll we'll see how this goes and uh if i need to try this again i think if um if i had if i was starting with fiber that wasn't as like already fluffy and combed and loose like dr super draftable then it might be a little easier for me to insert so i am going to just finish braiding or I don't know why I call it braiding because this is really just crocheting um, but I'm going to crochet the fiber up and oh my gosh this is so pretty. I am going to need to protect my work surface and because we are going to be playing with uh, commercial acid dyes all of the tools and equipment that I'm using in this video are dedicated for dye and yarn and are never used for the preparation of food. And whenever I am dealing with the dry dye powder, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Of the Paradise Fiber Acid Dyes that I have, I mean, I've played with all of them a little bit, but I've certainly played with some of the blues and the green and purple the most so far. So, what if we did, it is fall still, what if we used brown, uh, orange, red, yeah, what if we played with those tones? I'm a little tempted to also do black, but because we have the gray in here from the natural fiber, maybe I want to do brown instead. So yeah, let's do red, brown, and orange. And since this project feels like it might be a little messy, I am going to take a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino, and have this on hand, maybe not even soaked with vinegar yet, but have it on hand as a yarn mop to help wipe up any excess dye, wipe dye off my gloves and things like that. In my eight quart stainless steel pot, I have eight cups of water and I'm going to add three tablespoons of white vinegar. And this will be the dye bath that we eventually put the roving into to submerge it. Uh, I, one of the big reasons why I picked Paradise Fibers Acid Dyes for this project is that they do seem to spread out really, really nicely. And so I think that that would, combined with roving, give us something really, really beautiful. So I'm gonna set this aside so we can get ready to add powder to our roving. And I am gonna do it inside this steam pan because it'll be easier to keep any powder that spreads contained in here, which will make cleanup, uh, hopefully, uh, fairly trivial. But now I'm gonna go get suited up. All right, I think the way I wanna do this is do like red, orange, brown, and then the colors will move out of their respective areas. Uh, but I think that that's the way I wanna try to do it. So let's start with the red. Now, how am I going to get the powder <laughs> inside the roving? And actually, let's just bring the container in here right now. 
So I'm picking up a little bit of powder on a tooth or a toothpick, a popsicle stick, and I'm just trying to insert it in to the fiber. Maybe like what I would do with a Easter egg dye tablets or something. I have no idea if this is going to come out the bottom. I'm trying very hard to not like shake it. And I'm not really sure where I have placed it so far. <laughs> so we will see. The nice thing about doing this is that this fiber is so beautiful already that I think that just about anything I do should be really pretty. Okay, now for our orange, I know I have some red over there, so I'm going to start here and work my way back. The orange is not as uh, dusty as the red. It is a little bit more clumped in a way I am a little more used to. When it comes to acidize, like that one ended up being more on the surface versus going in. Uh, the red is so fine that it feels like it just sort of sunk into the fiber. And it's a little harder, I'm noticing with the orange, to pick up just a tiny amount of dye because it's sort of, this color sticks to itself a bit more. Uh, okay, now I've got a bigger clump, which is fine, put it in there. I'm really, really curious what is going to happen with this. Okay, let's do one last thing of orange. The colors will spread into one another for sure. I can wipe my gloves. Whew. I've never, I don't think I've ever done anything remotely like this before. And then now with the brown, I'm gonna start here and work our way down. Uh, similar to what I did with the other colors. And let's see, the brown is also a clumpier type color, which like, it's not a bad thing for it to be clumpy. It's uh, just different. And so I have a, whoop, that one on top, that's fine. I have a feeling that it's about some of the like, the pigments. I have no idea what kind of fillers and stuff there are. I have found these dyes overall to be extremely pigmented. So that's a fair amount of dye. Put it in here. And the thing is, if I'm not impressed with the way that the colors spread out once we add this into the pot, we can always add more dye. Uh, part of me would want to see this to the end and see where we end up, but if I'm underwhelmed by what I see in the pot, we can just add more dye. There's no problem with that. But I think we're about ready. Okay, this is our moment of truth moment, which might feel a little anticlimactic. Uh, so I'm going to circle this up, pick this up, and put it in. And I have not pushed down, so we don't really see much right now. But what I am curious about, when I come over with our yarn mop, and you can see I've got some color on here from the popsicle stick, um, but I'm curious how much color is on the bottom of the pan. Not much, not much. I have no idea if powder would just sort of fall all the way through or what. I'm gonna soak the popsicle sticks in there. So, I have a feeling we're gonna add a lot more color to this skein no matter what. But, let's take this roving that we have not yet submerged over to the stove and chat some more. I figured that to start submerging it, we may as well be on the stove. So I have the heat on medium right now but let's start pressing. I'm pressing like gently. I think I saw a little bit of brown, but it's hard to know. Oh, see there, I see some brown. It's hard to know 
what's going to happen. And like, I have no idea how much color I added. So I am seeing some, it's possible some colors could might not move very far because this is dry, but I don't know. I haven't really observed any red yet. The brown has certainly popped out. Hmm. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect. I'm just slowly and gently and now, well, okay, it was gentle and now I'm being more aggressive with adding it in. And so, yeah, I haven't seen as much of the reds come and move. It looks like the browns and the oranges have come out a bit. The reds I haven't seen as much of, like I see a tiny bit right there, but otherwise I haven't really noticed it. So right now it feels like there's not that much color. Uh, I think that there is more color that I see than it feels like there might be on camera. I'm curious, oh, there's a lot of color in the pot. I see, so I think that what's happening is that as I push, the color was coming out uh, and going down. Uh, <laughs> so I think that it's just that I don't see the color. So I think what I wanna do is stop pressing. So there's a chance that we're gonna see a lot more pigmentation on the bottom of this because that's where a lot of the, the dye has gone than what we're seeing here on the top. Uh, and I don't want to continue. Actually, everything's submerged now, so I'm going to go take off the mask. Yeah, I mean, I think the brown is making a big appearance, but I do see some yellow and more reddish orange or reddish brown over here. So I'm curious how that might interact with the rest of the colors that we see down below. But I'm glad that there does seem to be a fair amount of pigment here. But maybe... Maybe what I should have done, instead of trying to press this into water, is I should have tried to pour water on top of it. That is something we can always try again in the future. But I'm glad that I started with this fiber because even if the colors really blend together a lot and we just have a beautiful brown over top of this, though there's still gonna be tonal variation for sure. And we have that beautiful natural gray and white in here as well. So let's go ahead and wait. I'm gonna keep an eye on this and I will reduce the heat as needed and I will come back, I guess, in 20 minutes and we'll see how we're doing. All right, it has been 20 minutes and I, have, it looks like a lot of water has cleared. I don't think I ever actually like checked the color before. Ooh, but if I move it, see, that means some orange came out. It should be gentle. Yeah, there there is color still in the fiber that has not uh, bound. Uh, and so I am going to come and add two, three, four tablespoons of white vinegar. Things could take a while because uh, there's resist in here without twist. There's like n the surface area and volume. It can take the dye more time to travel and strike. Plus it's not super washed. So I am going to keep it on low heat, the lowest heat setting possible for another 20 minutes. Uh, and then if we still a little, see a little bit of color, we're going to need to leave the fiber in here to cool completely anyway. So uh, yeah, I think that that is my plan. It has been another 20 minutes. And once again, I'm not seeing a lot of liquid. If I move it, there might be some orange. Eh, I think we're probably okay. Not a lot of color, but also we don't know what's going on on the bottom. So we'll have a few moments of reveal and also what's happening on the interior. So I am very curious. And if it is fairly pastel and subtle, because the base was so amazing to begin with, I'm not gonna be mad. But I'm now gonna turn off the heat, set this aside to cool completely so we can look at it further. But since it's roving, I don't want to touch and move it too much while it is warm 
because I don't want to risk quilting it. But as for this yarn mop we didn't really need, let's add three tablespoons of vinegar and eight cups of water to the pan. There wasn't very much color in there to begin with. Once I'm gloved up, I will spread things back out, but let's go speed things up and use the red, orange, and brown dye to create some magic and see what the colors are doing and see how I feel to create something awesome on this yarn. As we get started with the dyeing, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to Tamara Spanez, Stacy Pace, Elena Carnes, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber patrons whose names you'll see up on the screen right now. Patreon is a really great way to help support the content here on this channel. And in addition to early access to the Dye Pop PS series, patrons can get a number of other perks. Go and check out patreon.com slash chemnitz for more details about what I offer over there. Going into this Swish DK yarn, I didn't really know where I wanted to go, but lately I've really been feeling wanting to play with brown dye a lot more. I feel like it's a color I don't play with nearly enough, and so it's fun to try to think and incorporate it into colorways. Actually, yeah, I think that during this month of November, I really want to try to incorporate brown into more of my colorways and try to make that effort there to make it not just an accent, but a star in its own right, because it's a beautiful, beautiful color. But anyway, I added the dye, moved the yarn around without waiting very long, allowing the colors to spread. And then once I was satisfied with the color, I let the yarn heat for at least 30 minutes, turn off the heat and let the yarn cool completely. The 30 minutes are up and I'm about to turn off the heat. I don't think I quite gave brown the moment I wanted to. The red and orange spread so beautifully that we got a lot of coverage right away. And since we had enough water in here, adding the brown speckles all over allowed it to spread out and it deepened the orange and red, giving us a beautiful, stunning fall leaves colorway. Uh, so once this cools, then we can go and wash everything. Let's wash our fall leaf yarn mop. This color is amazing. I loved how bright the red and orange were when I added it onto the yarn, but then adding the brown on it deepened them into like a rust color and like a more rustedy red hue. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, sometimes, you know, as much as I love dyeing, we're seeing a little bit of bleeding. As much as I love dyeing multiple skeins of yarn at a time, sometimes when you're dyeing just one, it gives you space to really paint and play with the colors, which is a lot of fun. But hopefully, whatever is bleeding will resolve quickly. Oh man, that's too bad. We're seeing a reasonable amount of some bleeding. But since we were painting directly with dry powders, there is a chance that on here we had some undissolved powder that is now dissolving. And so I'm going to cross my fingers that maybe that's what happened. Uh, because I really like this colorway and I don't want the colors to bleed. I mean, there is a lot of color in here, but it's not like mega saturated. We still have soap in here. But already, already the bleeding is less. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash this a few more times off camera and then I'll pop back in. All right, that is so much better. I'm glad that that didn't go on for a long time. And it is helpful to know before we start washing our roving, which we are now going to do. Here is our cooled off roving. And I am hopeful, as I stick it into the pan, that it is all the color has absorbed and wow! 
Look at those deeper colors on the bottom. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that's what I was hoping for. Ah, oh, because like we couldn't see because we have the dye inside the roving. And I have no idea how dissolved, how well things are dissolved here. But right now, I'm not really seeing any color bleeding, which is great. So now I need to add more liquid carefully, carefully. And I am gonna add just a little bit of some dish soap as well. And then I am going to let the fiber, once we fill this up with the cool water, to soak in it gently for a little bit. But, I mean, they're suds, but so far so good when it comes to bleeding. So far so good. Phew. For all, like we had powder in there, we did compress it a fair amount. And so, I think that we were able to dissolve all of that dye powder, which is amazing. And yeah, I'm just gonna let this sit for about a minute and then we'll rinse out the soap. Okay, let's remove this water, which again, I'm not seeing, I'm trying not to agitate it, so I'm pouring the water off. I'm not seeing color come out. Over here, I have trouble seeing the difference between the gray and white fiber but we could still see it on the other side. So I'm sure that those differences will still be present on here. Uh, and now let's rinse out the soap, but I think, I think that we are good. I don't think I'm seeing any color bleeding. So I am gonna go ahead and put this fiber through my thin dryer with the yarn, hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back to take another look at it. This fiber turned out so pretty. And now to the best of my ability to rearrange, this is the area that was on top, and this is what was beneath. And so I was concerned that I didn't add that much color to the pot, but it's really that as I was pushing it down, that dye was dissolving and going down and not up. And so we do have a nice variety of pigmentation here. That will look more pastel than this, but potentially, depending on what we see in some of these resist areas, more saturated than that. Now I need to open this up uh, so that way we can see what we have. And we do have some darker patches and some lighter patches in here. And ooh, this is really fun. The colors did move, but ultimately, they also kind of stayed where I put them. I want to fluff up this fiber a bit, but we do have more brown with a little bit of orange, more orange, and then more red sections here. Now, I'm a little nervous. The surface, I would say, okay, this is still really, really fluffable and is gonna be really draftable. There is a tiny bit of maybe a little bit of surface felting, but that isn't gonna cause any trouble with spinning. I mean, a light little pinch sort of fluffs this back up. Uh, so I am gonna go and just fluff the rest of this really quickly. There we go, that just took about a minute. I think that this fiber is really, really pretty. And even in some of the deeper sections, well, over here it's a little harder to see the natural variation of the more white and gray, but it look, I guess because it looks a little bit more like variation and depth of that pigment. So this yarn has a ton of dimension to it and I think will turn into a really, really stunning yarn. And I would like to dye more of this in the future. I know we just opened it up, but I am gonna now re-crochet uh, it. I certainly could have just left it as it was dyed, but now I feel, oh, this is so pretty. I feel like you see more of the variation throughout. So while with reskeining yarn, I prefer to see things as they're dyed, but with fiber, because there's so many different ways to spin it, having a feel of the different colors, I think is really, really helpful. And this is, breathtaking oh my goodness 
we had a yarn mop that didn't have very much color, so I went ahead and dyed it a lot heavier using red, orange, and brown. And I love this colorway so unbelievably much. We had a lot of water in the pan, so as I speckled the brown all over, it spread. And the spread, not only did we still get some speckles, but we got this haze of color all over the yarn. I wish it would be so easy for me to just quickly dye up more of this. But part of what worked so well was that I had the one skein of yarn spread out so much in the pan. And I think if the pan was more crowded, it would take more layers of color, which is fine, but there's some ease to this that, uh, I mean, I may try to replicate it or do something fairly similar. I'm so thrilled with this combination, but uh, yeah, I just have to think about how to do, how I would want to do it in the future. But no matter what, I plan to play with this color combination again. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been a while since I've dyed some roving, and I love, love, love how this turned out. If you want to learn more about any of the yarn bases, I will have affiliate links to both Paradise Fibers and Knit Picks down in the video description, and I just am so, so happy with how this fiber turned out. Would I try inserting dry powder into roving again? I don't know. I don't know if I would do that. I might try speckling the roving, damp roving, and then submerging that. I think I might prefer that to trying to insert dry powder into dry roving, but I am always open to suggestions, and I think that this fiber turned out so pretty, but the effects may have been similar with wet yarn with like more sort of speckled but in big areas. I think that that could have worked fine. So yeah, there's always just, there's no harm in trying a new technique. I mean, I suppose with fiber, the worst that happens is that you felt it. That's the worst that happens is that you get something unspinnable, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that bad. Please make sure that you're subscribed, turn on notifications, like the video and all that jazz. And if you haven't ever checked out the Chemnitz Patreon, please and just go look at the page and see what some of the fun perks are. Most of my posts on Patreon are exclusive for people who have signed up to be Chemnitz patrons, but you can follow the page to see anything that I post publicly and I believe you can have it set up so it goes to your email. So there is a way to follow me there without uh, paying any money. But if you do sign up, you immediately get access to all of the posts that are available to the level that you selected. And there are previous behind the scenes sneak peeks and things that you can go check out as well. The link is in the video description or you can go to patreon.com slash chemnitz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.